Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at this star system right here. This unusual star system is very very beautiful, very mysterious and may actually one day cause extinction on our planet Earth. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. So this is actually a system known as WR104, also known as V5907 Sagittarii because it is a star system that's about 8,000 light years away in the Sagittarius constellation. WR here stands for Wolf Rayet. If you don't know what these are, you may want to check out one of the videos I made about a couple years ago. But in essence, a Wolf Rayet star is a very massive but somewhat unstable star that is about to go supernova. And it's actually this one right here. Uh, it's a WC9 class. And it's a star that's basically, well, it's at its last sort of legs. It can go supernova either tomorrow or in the next few hundred thousand years, but it's definitely going to go supernova and most likely create a black hole. Its partner is a B-type star, also very massive, but is a little bit more stable and might have a few more years of life in it. Uh, but this is a star we're kind of really going to be talking about, because this is a star that, when it goes supernova, is going to create a very unusual event. But let's actually go back a little bit and talk a little bit more about what's actually happening here and why we know about this particular system. It all started when we actually started looking at uh, this region of, of the sky and we discovered something very unusual. We discovered this very beautiful formation that kind of looks like this. This is a helix. It's basically a very unusual helix that when you try to change into infrared light and compose as a kind of a video, you get this. This very beautiful, very unusual looking pattern. Now, this is happening because the Wolf Riot star in the middle is releasing a lot of gas that's kind of creating a tail that's then being uh, moved around the system and essentially swirled in this way by the partner star. And what we're actually looking at is the top of the system. We're literally looking from this perspective. So this would be the side perspective. And this would be if we were looking at it from the top. And it's kind of what we're seeing. Now, normally, because the star is so far away, 8,000 light years away, and because it's basically just a typical star that's about to go supernova, we wouldn't really concern ourselves with it. But it just so happens that this star was actually in the news a few times because scientists are really scared of the system. And I'm going to tell you why. First of all, when this star goes supernova, it's going to create a relatively powerful uh, explosion. And here's a visual representation of this uh, from a picture from Kyoto University. Basically, you have this Wolf Riot star that is about to go supernova and turn into a black hole. And when it does, it, the black hole is going to release two jets, one going this way, other one going the other way. And these two jets are actually going to break the uh, variety of... And these two jets are essentially going to produce a huge amount of gamma rays uh, when they break through all of the stellar leftover stuff. Now, these two jets are going to go into direction. This way and that way. Guess who's here? That's right, us. We seem to be located pretty much spot on in the direction where this jet is going to be headed. Now, these are so-called gamma ray bursts. If you have never heard this term before, gamma ray burst is one of the most highly energetic events in the universe. The only thing that's more powerful than a gamma ray burst is basically the Big Bang. A gamma ray burst can actually produce more energy than the entire galaxy, even though it only lasts for like a few seconds. Normally, this would also not be a problem because we've actually already detected quite a lot of gamma ray bursts coming from various regions of space. But it just so happens that we are right in the direction of the gamma ray burst 
from a relatively powerful star that's going to create a very large supernova whose gamma ray burst is essentially going to be headed in the direction of our solar system. Now, our solar system is, like I said, very far away, 8,000 light years away from, from this region. It's somewhere over there. But despite this distance, it just so happens that the power of gamma ray burst means that by the time that it actually gets to our solar system and basically strikes Earth, there's a very high chance that it's still going to be extremely powerful to the point of it essentially destroying about half of the entire ozone layer on our planet. Now, this is a serious concern. And as a matter of fact, many scientists have actually been debating this for the past decade or so. Um, well, actually, since 1999, when we just discovered the system, because some people are saying that if the system WR-104 is um, inclined in such a way that it's pointing with its polar region directly at our solar system, we are in a huge trouble. But some scientists are saying that what we're looking at here, this particular picture, is actually not 90 degree inclination. This might actually have a little bit of an incline. In other words, let me just show you in the universe sandbox. Here's a representation of the system with the wolf riot star in the middle, a very sort of large uh, and very, very massive star and a smaller B type star right there. And basically what the scientists are currently saying is that, well, if we were looking at it from this perspective, then we're definitely in trouble. Even at 8,000 light years, the gamma ray burst is still going to cause a tremendous amount of damage when it actually hits our Earth and actually our entire solar system. So it doesn't really matter if you try to run away to Jupiter, you're still going to get hit by these uh, very powerful rays. But it's possible that we're actually inclined this way and we're actually looking at a system that's under a bit of an angle, in which case it's actually going to miss us. It's not going to hit our solar system. And this is where it gets a little bit interesting. For the past few years, as a matter of fact, pretty much every year, scientists seem to recalculate it a little bit. The last uh, study that I've basically read said that, yes, we are kind of pointing at the polar region. In other words, we are in trouble. But a year prior, they were saying it was about maybe 30 degrees away. So then there wouldn't really be a concern. Now, what exactly is the problem here? And what exactly is going to happen assuming that it's at a poor region, assuming that basically it goes supernova and basically the worst possible scenario occurs. Well, let's place Earth not so far away just so we can actually test this. Uh, first of all, it's not really going to do this. So let's actually initiate the supernova. We're going to decrease time here. And there is that supernova. Basically, right now, if I look at Earth, it's most likely going to completely evaporate because this is a very powerful event. So anything within about 10 light years away is going to really suffer. Uh, but because this is 8,000 light years away, we're not really going to witness any of this. This is not going to happen. As a matter of fact, we have to go really, 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 really far away. And imagine that we're looking at the actual ray coming off this in a single direction. Imagine there is a huge amount of gamma rays coming from this direction and you can actually kind of almost see them because of this blue halo that's created here. And they're basically headed for us. And here is Earth. I'm going to place it right there. And it's about to get hit by those gamma rays. Now, what's going to happen is for a period of anywhere from literally a few minutes to possibly months, our Earth is going to get bombarded by various types of radiation, starting with gamma rays. All of this will occur pretty much instantly as soon as we see the supernova, because most of these things move at almost the speed of light. So there's not going to be any warning. And as soon as these gamma rays start hitting our planet, and here let's just try to simulate some of these gamma rays coming toward Earth. As soon as they start hitting our planet, the ozone layer is is going to start getting destroyed by these very powerful rays. And it's very likely that f just from the supernova alone, the actual damage is going to be about 50% of the entire ozone layer is going to be destroyed. 
Now, it might not sound like something that's too dangerous, but the thing is, with 50% of ozone layer gone, pretty much most of the plants and most of the animal life is going to start getting bombarded by x-rays, by ultraviolet radiation from our sun, and is essentially going to start slowly disappearing. Plants will most likely get destroyed first, the animal life will fall, and the majority of humans will not be able to survive on what's left. So, some of the scientists propose that there's probably only going to be one solution, and that's going back into the cave world, becoming cavemen yet again, and developing an underground society. Now, if this happens, and assuming that this is all basically headed our way in the next few thousand years, would definitely have to be prepared because this event would be catastrophic for the entire solar system. This would imply that even though we were so worried about other supernova, like for example the Betelgeuse supernova that's going to occur possibly in the next few uh, thousand years as well, and any other supernova that we previously mentioned on the channel are really not that big of a deal. But this one, despite its distance, is going to create a directed focused light source coming toward Earth with so much energy that the only thing that's more energetic is essentially the Big Bang itself. And this energy will be enough to strip our planet of a tremendous amount of atmosphere. And as you know, without the atmosphere and without protective layers in our atmosphere, most of the life will perish as well. As you can see, it's already actually started happening as our planet became relatively dark and brown in color. Now, life in water will be okay, life underground will be okay, but life on Earth, on the surface of Earth, will definitely not survive. So this is something that the scientists have been concerned for the past few years, and they're still trying to figure out if it's going to happen, and if so, when is it going to happen, and if so, what we need to do to survive this unusual event. So whether this unusual star known as WR104 is going to be the end of humanity or whether it's actually going to miss us completely and instead will reward us with a beautiful uh, light far, far away but also with some really interesting scientific data is, well, it's something that we don't know yet. Only the future will tell. Hopefully we'll be okay, hopefully this will miss us and we definitely have to start looking for more of these unusual formations in the sky that are similar to WR-104 because these are actually the most dangerous type of events that could potentially cause the next extinction. Anyway, we'll talk more about this in the future so do come back and subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games. In the next few videos we will also discuss something that you may have not known before so do come back tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.